In this first chapter, we will learn how to create tileable texture maps from any photo or image using a variety of valuable Adobe Photoshop techniques. Alright, so this is a photograph that I found on the internet. It actually looks like a 3D model. I honestly can't remember who did this back in the day, but I'm giving this out for free, so hopefully there is no copyright issue. But anyways, um, just imagine that this was a photograph that you had taken. And uh, in real life, you usually get this kind of stuff where you have a darkness up here, darkness down here, maybe some light here because sunlight, clouds, that kind of thing. So first thing that we want to do with something like this is to be able to remove that type of lighting because when we make this a tileable texture, this lighting is going to cause issues. And I'll show you what I mean. If we come up here to Filter, Other, Offset, and by default I just have this at like 300 and 300 on both of these. You can see here it's really obvious where there's dark areas meeting with the light, etc. So what we want to try and do is first thing remove some of that. So I'm going to cancel this and this is just an old school technique that I like to use. So we'll duplicate this and then um, we're just going to invert that with control I and then basically I'm going to come in here to filter I'm going to blur this with a Gaussian blur something like this. I want to get it pretty good here. And then I'm going to come up here to adjustments and levels. You can't see it off the screen, but I am adjusting the levels. And I want to really push these values because I want to get some really darks and brights. Uh, next thing I'm going to do to this is I'm just going to make it black and white. So I'm going to remove the saturation. I wish you could see this off to the side here. I'm selecting hue, saturation. And let's just turn that down so it's almost black and white. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is just flip through these different layer settings and what I like to do is just press the down arrow and then you can go through a couple different ones here. And right here already you can start to see how we're removing a lot of the lighting information. So let's find one that works pretty well. This is pretty close, the overlay one, but let's flip through some more. Soft light is pretty good too. So let's come up here and we'll either use soft light or overlay. I think soft light is probably our best representation. So let's do that. And now you can kind of see we've um, neutralized a lot of our values, but let's turn this down a bit. Okay, gotcha. So we still have some areas a little brighter than others like up here compared to here, but that's okay. I'm gonna play with the uh, levels on this again See if I can get something that'll kind of even those out a little bit more. Maybe something like that. So I'm going to make a duplicate of my background here and then I'm going to collapse these into one, this new layer I've got. So let's go ahead and do that offset again. Let's take a look at how things are going. So now we're you know in a little bit of a better space here. There's still some discoloration, uh, but that's okay. So let's go ahead and say, okay, remember these values, 300 and 300, because we'll want to revert to that later. And now it's the point where we want to make this a tileable texture. And all that means is whenever you know, you're applying this as a texture that if we were to offset this, you wouldn't see anything like this. Everything would just match perfectly. Now this one's a little bit more of a challenge than a lot of other, um, I guess, uh, in displacement maps that maybe you would create off of something like a tileable dirt ground or stuff like that because of all the complex shapes that are in here. And I'm not going to show you the entire process, but to give you an idea of what we can do is I always like to look at shapes like this, like how big is this? Is there a shape down here that kind of matches that? And I think there is. So I'll come through here and I'll find some interesting pieces that I think we can kind of copy and paste. And I usually feather these whenever I do it. So we'll give it a little feather, maybe like two, and let's copy, control C and then control V to paste, and you can see it's on a new layer. And let's just come over here and you can see this kind of combines, and we'll just kind of transform this a little bit. And now you can kind of get the idea that maybe this would make out a new brick that would fit nicely with this so that we start to build up some of that tiling structure. And there might be places around here where you kind of want to blend in um, a shape with an existing one. So maybe on this piece, we want to have a, a combo of something like this come through so that we don't have like just little ones combined with just the big ones. So let's come up here and we'll copy this guy out. Let's feather that again. 
two, control C, control V. And then here, I think we can come through. Let's press the E key to go to our eraser. Let's turn up the opacity on these so we can get this a lot stronger. And then we can kind of maybe blend this in. And this starts to feel sort of like a stone that's in here that combines nicely. And if we press this up or down, you can kind of see what's happening. All right, and then we have um, some shapes that are bleeding over a little bit. I think this works out pretty well. I'm gonna collapse that down. Some of these areas, you know, I might fill out where I need uh, a bit of a side in here. Actually, this kind of works all right. I think this is gonna be okay, but we still need to fix this a bit. So I'm gonna press the S key, which takes us to our clone stamp tool. And then uh, finding an edge, like something like this, hold down the Alt key, and then select the location that you want to copy and click that. Now we'll come down here, and if you zoom in, you can see that black that's hovering over the cursor. That's technically this piece. So let's come in here and start painting that in. That's kind of nice. You know, we can, instead of just copying and pasting all the time, this is another way to build up different types of rocks and things like that around. And we can do the same thing down here. So for example, we need to close off the top edge of this. Let's find a rock that feels kind of interesting. Alt click again. And then now you'll notice the top of that rock. And that kind of fits in nicely here for making this rock feel tileable on this side. And that's pretty much all there is to it. You kind of go through, you know, even here you see like a hard edge. You might come over here and press Alt and then click here. And then you can kind of come through and um, adjust the blends between these things. And the idea is that you want to do that all the way across any of the seams that you see here, 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 and here. And whenever you're done with that, um, if you want, you can hit the offset again to, well, I guess what I mean is come over here, offset, and then you could change this back to negative 300, and negative 300 if it was important to you that you have your original photo um, shape on this, but uh, or positioning. And you can see down here, this is that other rock that we kind of built in and we started blending in. And you can see over here where we started blending in other rocks. So I'm not gonna do the whole piece, but just imagine that you use that workflow and you go all the way around, and then you can have yourself a nice tileable texture. And this one's pretty cool. This could become a diffuse map, something like that. So that's all there is to it for making tileable textures. Pretty easy using the, you know, the stuff I like to use the most again is that uh, stamp tool, the clone stamp tool, and then um, using the lasso tool up here to kind of select different portions, control C to copy, control V to paste, and then blending things slowly over time. So uh, next what we're gonna go ahead and do is work on how to create a displacement map. If you like this video, the entire tutorial is available for free on Gumroad. Click the yellow Gumroad pop-up box below and you can download all five HD videos for this tutorial series. Additionally, I've included everything that I demonstrate in the project, such as the maps that you see here, like this diffuse, displacement, spec map, and even my bump map. And then in addition to that, I've also put my ZBrush file in here that you guys can open up and use. And finally, I've uh, included the Keyshot file. So whether you want to create everything yourself or use my maps and files to follow along, everything's absolutely free. And as usual, thank you guys so much for watching these tutorials, and I hope you learned a few valuable tricks. Until next time.